So Mars season two, what's the main thrust of this season relative to last season? I would say it's, it's the new addition to the colony uh, about co coexisting between the two colonies all of a sudden. I've, I've jumped into shows that were going into their second and third seasons in the past and while they do have a shorthand as a cast and a crew, um, it made sense that I, m me and the other actors that joined me that were new, uh, because the characters are new in the show, it you know, played well that we were new to them. And um, it adds tension to the storyline. You know, it, it creates that drama and it opens the dialogue for that conversation about what's it going to be like when you get beyond the science in Mars. And I think that you know, the whole team of Lucrum that comes in serves that. Jihei, did you guys have any tips for them in terms of how to simulate life on Mars that you gained from your first season experience? Uh, definitely having the research and the foundation of first season helped with season two. Um, I guess there was like, th there was three of you guys mm -hmm. uh, that came on as Roxy. new, no, four. But oh. on Lucrum's side, it was yeah. Roxy. Roxy, Evan, Evan and, and you, yeah, so yeah. really three. Um, yeah, we try not to help them out much. <laughs> no, no, no. Nobody warned us about the damn suits. Yeah. <laughs> you hear Is that actors, the biggest challenge? Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, well, I would yeah. say so. In, yeah. in a I petty way, so. yeah. You know, <laughs> the, 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 the suit, the helmet, the everything, and the heat. Well, if yeah. you have any kind of, uh, <clears throat> any, any kind of a claustrophobic, you know, if you, yeah. There's, a, there's always that feeling because we're not, we're not also just in, inside these suits all the time, but we're also in what, what Mars is supposed to be in right. closed environments. Yeah. yeah, so it feels, it feels pretty. And you mentioned kind of the human drama element. A lot of the promotional material we've seen so far has really been selling that this year. So would you say the balance has shifted a little bit in terms of that versus the science aspect of season two? Well, I think so. Uh, Dee Johnson, the showrunner, kind of, she describes it as 75-25, more towards the scripted and the drama, because them getting there last year was about the science, and it was about getting them there. Mm -hmm. And this year, it was natural to add that tension to it, because I think, like I said earlier, people want to open that dialogue about, well, if we're going to go to this place, what are we going to do? How are we going to behave? Are we going to continue to behave like we've behaved here? You know, And then how are we all going to interact w with each other? And um, I think that we get to that pretty quick. Pretty yeah, quickly. And, and I also I think that uh, in this season you get to really dig into uh, the inner journey of each character, each of each main character in the stories, and and the new characters that come in. And so it's I think season one was more uh, related to are we going to be able to get there, and once we get there, are we going to be able to survive? Mm -hmm. Um, and season two is yes. Now, now we've you know, deployed the dome. We have a habitat. We have built an infrastructure. And how are we getting along amongst ourselves? And then, you know, the the explorers, the scientists, and exploring colony is faced with this new venture. The miners come in trying to exploit, and they don't want to necessarily work with you, so it, it becomes, a, it becomes a, a very interesting dynamic. Was there a particular scientific element of the Mars setup that surprised you when you learned it for the first time, where you're like, wow, I didn't think about that when it came to li li living on Mars? Well, just the, just the science alone, you know, when you realize that the major, majority of the atmosphere is carbon dioxide, right? Well, and if they figure out how to, when they, well, they've already figured out how to split it into oxygen and carbon monoxide. And so there's a process to do that. And when you talk to people that explain how this is gonna happen, how we can terraform and how we can create oxygen, how we can, how we can change the planet to suit us as we change to suit it, I think those elements of science um, are, it's amazing that they're real, they're, they're factual. And I'm always blown away by what's real. Because, you know what I mean, according to really smart people and outside of myself, clearly. Yeah, before the show started, I had no idea the, the whole Mars adventure or the reality of Mars is actually happening. And there are multiple, you know, programs in China and in Russia and, and with SpaceX. Well, and that's actually leads into my next question, because a lot of these projects they've talked about, it's kind of, they think of it as a one-way trip, right? You're going to go, you're going to live there, but yeah. you're probably not going to come back. Mm -hmm. For you guys personally, and, and people, I think people were surprised when they put that out there, how many people applied, you yeah. know, to yeah. want to do this. Would you guys personally be down for that kind of adventure? 
Uh, I know. All things being equal. <laughs> well, I for me, I would only go if it if if it was safe. <laughs> safe enough. And if and if I have to, you know, if I could come back, if I don't have to give up seeing the blue sky and a swim in the ocean, and if I could just go for a few months and come back, maybe I will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would go. No, there's no way. Um, not, you know, just beyond the inherent risk and, be, and just the idea of that's not, you know, there's a certain type of individual that wants to go, that has that yearning to break that ground. I, I'm not one of those people. I'll applaud the crap out of them when they get there, but I'm happy to watch them go.